On October 5th, 2021, Lex Kim Bobrow, or Titanomachy RPG on Twitter, released the first iteration of what is now known as the Caltrop Core SRD. Named by Dicebreaker as one of the best tabletop RPG systems to hack into a custom game, the Caltrop Core is the foundation for over 100 TTRPGs and is currently in the middle of its second game jam. The Caltrop Core itself is a straightforward dice pool SRD. Using only four-sided die, players roll their allotted number and take the highest result. A one is an absolute failure, a two is a partial failure, a three is a partial success, and a four is an absolute success. The system's simplicity is in part what makes it so approachable, especially for first-time tabletop designers, and the text of the document makes clear that Caltrop Core is intended for newcomers. Seeing its rapid growth and adoption by dozens of new designers prompted me to take a deep dive into its origins. I'm a history nerd, and I think this system is important enough to deserve a formal record. So, to celebrate the brief history of Caltrop Core, I sat down with Lex Kim Bobrow and got the story directly from them. For full disclosure, I am technically the first person to publish a complete Caltrop Core game, and am credited in the game's text. This is not an unbiased documentary. I think Lex is great. A full transcript of this interview will be made available in the video description. I'm Lex, also known as Titanomachy RPG on Twitter. We, uh, or I, started the Twitter account to promote like a, a little actual play show of D&D with my friends uh, back early in January of 2021. We, it took us a while to you know, get stuff together, but I was like, let me build a network uh, while we're getting ready. Uh, the show we did end up doing a few episodes of, but it's hard to... Uh, you know, produce and promote and like everybody who's doing an actual play show on their streams, like hats off to you. That stuff is <laughs> not easy to do. It's not just like, oh, let's just play a game and record it. No, nope, there's so much stuff behind the scenes. So uh, what ended up happening was I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to do to like promote the account and you know interacting with people. And eventually I started posting some of my homebrew for D&D 5th edition and people liked those things. I, I do like marketing and copywriting for a living. So I know how to, you know, sell some things. So I was talking about mm -hmm. the upcoming show and eventually my own designs and my own creations started to get more of my time. And I ended up being more about creating uh, 5e content. And then, you know, very quickly after that, becoming uh, a game designer of my own uh, indie TTRPGs. And so that's sort of been the trajectory uh, till now. It, it started with a show that didn't really go anywhere, then uh, releasing my own homebrew, a lot of which is just, you know, either like pop culture or really just whatever weird stuff I can, uh, <laughs> you know, think of in the moment. Just a very regular trajectory as far as like my place in our little corner of the hobby. I've always been sort of nerdy. I loved uh, RPGs. I played a lot of like video game RPGs when I was younger. Golden Sun was my first RPG ever, and that sort of like set off a whole love of, of that genre. I remember playing one session of, I think it was Pathfinder 1E in college. Uh, it was my friend's D&D &D night, and I was visiting from out of town on my spring break. And I don't remember much about it. I just remember them handing me a sorcerer character sheet. I cast Fireball on a dragon. It was great. From there, we I didn't play again for many years. And, you know, there have been a couple attempts. And eventually my brother, my younger brother, bought the 5th edition starter kit with my Lost Minds of Fandelver and, uh, you know, character sheets and stuff. We were meeting every week. We were enjoying it. And around that time, I started listening to The Adventure Zone. Uh, mm hmm and it was, I was listening to the balance arc and I was listening. It's funny to say this, but I basically learned how to DM from Griffin McElroy, which I know is like not, they're not really considered paragon of, of rules. Uh, not really, no. At, uh, the Adventure <laughs> Zone. Uh, but that is where I sort of started. Uh, I was like, oh, I could do this. And that's very much my personality of like, oh, this, I mean, this sounds fun. Let me try it. And if I don't like it, whatever. And so I, about six months into playing fifth edition, I started DMing for the first time. And I had a blast and I was loving, I love prep. I was doing, I was doing all the over prep that, you know, I don't do anymore, but I was enjoying it. It was, um, a really good time with my friends. And I like 
had done the very uh, hubristic thing that I'm that I want to do, which is uh, totally homebrew, a- absolutely everybody's classes tailored mm-hmm. to their play style because I know them really well. It's like my, a couple of my best friends and my actual brother um, and one of our friends from the the barcade. And I this these were not even really homebrew subclasses. They were more like I was just like. I almost like hacked it my first go around. I made my whole homebrew setting and story and all that stuff. Um, and that sort of kicked off uh, that that early era. And then the story I just told before that is sort of what comes next. Right, so I remember I was just talking with people on Twitter, uh, Steam Sage, who has since <laughs> been a, taken a step back from Twitter, but she's great. Um, and shout out to her. Um, we were just talking, and maybe there were other people there. And it was just someone was like, "Oh, I just wanted to have like a a game where you just like is like basically you have very a lot of downtime activities. It's like you you work the vegetable garden and you chase the rabbits away, and you have like you know just a good time with your friends." Uh, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So let me, let me start playing with that. I, I was like, okay, I, I heard, I've, uh, I've listened to the Adventure Zone play, you know, those other, they've played one page RPGs. I've, I was starting to already read into other systems because there's so many great systems out there. So I'd, I'd already read Lasers and Feelings. I had read, uh, you know, all these, I, I was familiar with Monster of the Week from Adventure Zone as well. So I kind of loaded up Lasers and Feelings on a one page sheet and then i was like i'll use like i'll use the same like 2d6 core rules as as powered by the apocalypse and so i just like created my first game um and sage also helped me with with the name eventually and then it became beach episode uh which is my first game that i published uh Mm -hmm. i think and beach episode was just like you have three stats you have a little stat array and you go have a beach episode with your friends. And I, I think I play tested it like twice and then I released it. I was like, that's that's good enough. It's a one page game. It's it's fine. Um, and I started making games from there. So it started as a joke and I, I've told the story before. <laughs> Uh, I say it all the time because it is one of those things that it's like, you know, you might as well try stuff because you never know. You literally never know what's going to catch on. Mm-hmm. So it started as a joke between me, Maps and Quests, and a ghost of Eli. I've uh, made a role play over on Twitter. Uh, we were just talking. Someone was like, talk, I think Mappy was talking about, you could do a dice pool system with D4s and call it, you know, whatever. Uh, and so we were t- we were just like chatting about it. And, th- and then we were like, oh, like like caltrops because it's funny because d4s are pointy and uh whatever and they're like oh we'll call it the caltrop system and so i was like this is actually kind of interesting uh and and the idea would be you would roll the pool of d4s you'd take the highest one and and each uh you know face would be a different outcome so it's like powered by the apocalypse except with one more level of success degrees of success Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard it called, and so now I say that too. So I I went to go try to design with it, and I realized, oh, I don't have any like actual text here to guide the design process. I don't really know what these numbers mean. So let me just write down a quick, you know, numbered list, and I'll write out these like what each face means. And that dice core, like that little table, became the whole thing. Um, and that's the same. It's the same text. I I believe it's the same text that I originally wrote that's in the 1.0 SRD, I, I made a little one page sheet to post on Twitter. I don't even know why I thought I would do that, but I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like teaching people how to make a game uh, really like just, but like very briefly, here's just like a dice core run with it, do whatever you want. I think I had just uh, read Wander Home and Lumen, which are credited as very direct inspirations for Culture of Core. Um, and I posted it one day and immediately people were like, I already know a game that I want to make on this. Uh, and so it, it sort of like took off. And in fact, you, Aaron, are, are the first person to publish, officially publish a Caltrip Core game ever uh, because I 
uh, there were people who were like showing me progress shots and stuff. And so like that was cool. And I was working on my own thing. Uh, but the very first one on itch, the I believe is I adjure you ancient serpent by Aaron here. So, um, you know, you're a part of that. I don't, I almost said history, but I guess it, I mean, like we could say that. Listen, when things happen, that's history. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. It happened in the past. I just don't, it just feels like weird to give it all this magnitude, but really what happened is it took off. People started using it and I was like, oh, if I, you know, I can just like watch the train, leave the station, or I can like, you know, join in and, and guide the process and maybe make something really cool out of this. And so I started working on a, f- a fuller SRD with a little bit more explanations and things that I had learned from reading Wander, Home, and Lumen, these other systems. It had a little like step-by-step guide for making your first game. And, and I, I remember thinking like, I want this to be specifically a system to help new game designers make their first game. Like that was the first, that was the, the core idea of how I wrote that document because I know, I know, like, I was like, here's some stuff that I wish I had known. And I, I sort of just, like, pulled stuff together. And, I, and you know, even in the SRD, I'm like, I don't know much. I'm still new to this. But here's some insights that I've gathered. And I'm good at starting things. You know, that's sort of one of my, like, my temperament is such that I'm very willing to try, give something new a shot. And I'm not afraid of, um, you know, being bad at something that I'm just started. It's like, obviously, I'm going to be bad at it. Um, and that sort of comes from my other, you know, my previous quote unquote life of, uh, being more on the literary side of writing before coming over to, to game design. And you just got to make bad stuff before it, like the good stuff comes out. Uh, and so I was like, this is something that I'm good at. I'm not like a game design genius. I'm not like anything special with game design. I've read a lot of really cool games, but I am really good at starting things. So I kind of mashed those together, made this thing, and people started using it right away. It was, and you know, even from that one sheet, uh, there were a lot of people working on them. Uh, the full uh, SRD had people like just picking, like making games like nonstop. And so like it, it got to the point where it was like about 18 games made on the system. And I remember Spencer Campbell, Heal RPGs, creator of Lumen. Uh, And I believe like uh, Sean Drake as well from a couple of Drakes um, were both like, oh, you should do a game jam. And I was like, I don't know what a game jam. Well, I know what a game jam is from like indie games and like watching Markiplier videos where he would talk about, oh, this game was made during this jam, whatever. And I was like, I know what it is, but like I've never participated in one or ran one. So I don't, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll see. Um, And I, I sort of was like jokingly like, oh, if I hit, you know, 5,000 followers before the end of the year, uh, I'll do a game jam. I'll figure it out. It's it's probably fine. It's it's not going to be, even if I make a fool of myself, whatever, It's <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just a little thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I I got, I hit 5K a lot earlier than I thought I would. And I was like, all right, I guess we're doing a game jam. And uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's, I hosted a game jam for Caltrip Core. And it, the response was just absolutely mind blowing. There were, uh, right now at the, by the end of it, it was like 151 people had joined it. 92 games were submitted and this was a six day jam. It wasn't like, you know, a long time. Uh, like, I mean, the current, the one that we're, I'm running right now is going to be, you know, about three weeks or so, but three and a half weeks or something. Uh, but this was six days and 92 games were submitted and that brought the number of Couch Report games well above hundred, like in like a flash. It was incredible. I remember also talking to Spencer Campbell, uh, you know, before that, where he was like, he was, he was tweeting about how there's like 60 something games made on Lumen. I was like, that's awesome. That's, I can't even imagine that I'm, I'm at 18 games, you know, we're coming for you next year. And then I do the game jam and it's, there's like over a hundred, it was like, I think we ended at like 107, 108 games total created on Caltrip Core and, uh, really just a mind blowing response. So, uh, it's, it, and then, you know, we got featured in, Dicebreaker, alongside some really awesome other SRDs, including Lumen, but also Motif by Thought Police uh, and uh, Charge SRD uh, from RP of Fari Games. Shout out to them. We were on a game design panel together, um, and so that and there was. I was like, oh, oh crap! Like, oh shit! I'm I'm le- legit. Like, I'm, I'm next <laughs> to I'm next to Spencer Campbell and all these like <laughs> in like this article and on itch sometimes. I'm like, okay, well. You know, I may not be 
a very experienced or particularly like talented game designer, but I'm in this position and, you know, let me support uh, the community and, and like, you know, make have, support a cool thing that people are liking and just make it better for everyone if I can. So for the first one, my goal, like the stated goal of the jam and my goal for other people was finish one game in the six mm -hmm. days. Start and finish a game in six days. Doesn't have to be good or finished, whatever. Like, it doesn't have to be like polished, but it has to be playable. And that was my goal for myself and, and for the whole thing. And, and then it sort of exceeded all my expectations. For the second one, my idea was like, okay, we all wrote a game that first time. There's a bunch of people who wrote a game. Let's see what we've learned since then. Let's make a game with our new skill set, sort of like the sophomore album idea. And, uh, and, and a lot, maybe a lot, and, you know, having grown since doing the last jam, all the new people have a chance to hop in as well. So it's very like beginner friendly and like specifically uh, shout out new people in the, uh, in the text of the game jam, just so that everybody knows they're welcome. But the the idea came from like, all right, let's uh, show show me what you got. Like show, let's all show off some of the cool new stuff that we've learned since doing that first game. Because you you know every I feel like every game I write, I, I improve by leaps and bounds. It's like a huge improvement in like from my perspective, you know. So I wanted to give people that chance, and I wanted to see what other people were doing and how you know the the Caltrip core game dev community was advancing along, you know, in their skills. So it came along on a different train of thought from the jam, because I knew I had wanted to do another jam at some point because people were already like, oh, is there going to be another one? I didn't have time this time around. So I was like, we'll do at least one next probably two this year like 20, 2022 maybe three total because uh, people like doing them they're fun like everybody's working on something at the same time you can like you know you put you tweet about it and people like care because they're also working on their games uh but i was also thinking of creating you know i i, I my one of my near-term goals is to have a print book of one of my games and I, I wasn't sure which to do i had some ideas of what could be a candidate all this and then it sort of hit me recently like oh i could do like why not do my most popular release caltrip core and then i can have uh you know games in the same book as an example of what you can do with the system so it would be like an anthology of caltrip core games including the system and it would be a cool first physical release it would mean a lot to me all that stuff and i was thinking you know it actually hit me a lot later on. Like it was like three months into the release that I realized, oh, Couch Core is created by a tra queer, trans, non-binary Asian person, and that's mm -hmm. a really cool. That's really cool. And it, it really didn't hit me until like way, way in because I'm just living like you know, I'm just living my life. I don't think about. I don't like wake up in the morning and be like, yes, I am this. These are the these are my categories that I fit into today. Uh, so it, it just hit me later. And I was like, oh, I would love to uh, do the first volume or whatever it is being all queer POC game designers in this first book. Because, you know, this is, you know, typically people who do not get support and the spotlight and, and for any number of uh, structural and other reasons. And so I wanted to spotlight people like me. So I, I tweeted like, oh, hey, if you fit this description, uh, could you post a link to your Couch Record game? And it was like a f it was like maybe four people responded. And I was like, oh, wow, there's not as many as I thought, even with me being, you know, like me being uh, in this category or whatever. My system is still largely not people who are like me, which is not a problem, mm -hmm. but like I thought there would be more, you know. So I was like, how do I get more people like me? And also like, I was like, I want this book to be dope. So I'm going to, I want, I need more <laughs> games. Uh, I need more games to put in this book. And so I, I had been, I had an idea for a grant like a way back. I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll just do some uh, grant stuff just to give 
give back a little bit and you know help people do game, cool game stuff encourage people to make new games and then that that's when that idea kind of crashed into the game jam idea and the anthology idea and uh became the, the couch core micro grant so i was just, i wrote up like a little google forms and i was like i can do you know i can i can give a few people 50 bucks and make this a nice thing for for people and uh it's sort of like the timeline worked out i was like well I'll announce the jam and then it'll be a super cool surprise as well that there's this grant uh, going on. And uh, yeah, so uh, earlier this week, like, or actually yesterday and today, I announced the first couple winners of, of the grant. Um, and the response has been just absolutely wonderful. Everybody's like so supportive and, and like, um, you know, putting a spotlight on these just wonderful game designers and some of whom like people that I'm close to did not know about these people, even though I have interacted with these people. Uh, so it was good to get some of these really awesome people into the spotlight because they are doing really cool stuff, but you know, they are getting overlooked for any number of reasons. Well, I guess it's there's I, I have like a few goals but mostly you know i think overall what i would like is for couch record to keep growing and for people to keep making really cool games on it i don't have any like specific targets there's i have some things that would be nice to have you know like it would be nice if uh it got as you know kind of re reached more popularity and became on the level of like powered by the apocalypse that sort of level maybe even like i would love it if like some of my favorite gms and game designers were making games on my system and in fact i i remember one of the first uh ttrpgs that i read in its entirety because it was like a tw one of those 21 page you know sort of like shorter but not like a one page at all and uh i had I had bought an, a different trans bundle, different trans support bundle, because we constantly have issues with trans rights in the US. I, I was going through and I, I bought a bundle because I was like, I don't know where to start with it, all these indie games. I'll just buy this. There's like 75 games in it. And so I was just going through and like checking them out. And there was one called uh, Things Eldritch and Terrifying by uh, their at is Harpy Dora on Twitter. Um, uh, S Gates August, uh, and I played that game uh, with the person who became my partner. We that was we used this this game as an excuse to meet up in person for the first time because we had everybody had, a lot of us had just gotten our second dose of the vaccine, so we were like, you know, ready to to meet up and stuff. And uh, it's an absolutely beautiful game. It explores like the interplay between horror and sensuality. It's like a very sex sexy, dark game. And it was really like beautiful. And then that game designer made a game on Couch Core Last Jam. And it was like, you know, I was like, oh man, like this person who I owe a lot to, this was the first time me seeing like what a narrative game could really do. Like I hadn't read, I hadn't really read many others. So I was like, oh, this is what like if you, you don't have to do it like D&D, it can be like this. But even beyond that, it'd be cool if, you know, Brendan Lee Mulligan made a game on my <laughs> system. Um, you know, people I admire. Uh, I just want to make keep making cool games and supporting people uh, to make new games. By next April, I guess, I would like to have had a, a physical book come out. But I'm really happy with just like seeing where it goes, you know, it's uh, it's hard to predict like what it would look like because there's nothing else that I've experienced that's like this, <laughs> where it's like, oh, this, yeah, it's just a, it's a wild thing to have to explain to someone. And I really don't know. I had no idea where was this gonna, where this was going to go when I started. I had no idea where it was going to go in the middle and I still have no idea where it's going to go. Uh, but I trust that. Uh, hopefully it, it, it sort of, I mean, it sort of already is sort of sparking a new wave of game designers in the space and to have, to be a part of that and to like have helped that happen is really, really cool. 
And I'm hoping that those people do good with their games. There's, you know, at the end, I, I tell people to, you know, first of all, you can't use it for any bigoted shit because fuck you. Um, but also, like, if you're able to and, like, you don't need the income for your own bills, you know, support other mass, uh, you know, other mutual aid requests you see online, support other indie designers, uh, especially, like, our Global South indie designers, uh, RPG LATAM and RPG C, Southeast Asia. Um, and so my hope is, my one true hope about it is that whatever is created off of those games sort of can actually do some real good in the world. Because, like, games are fun and that's all well and good and I know they can help you with your, like, emotional... Um, you know, catharsis and stuff, but um, it would be cool if if those people went out and were, like, good game designers, but also, like, good people and used their, like, newfound monetizable skill to do some real, make an impact in, in the world. That would be the best thing. Yeah, so, obviously, fuck Nazis. Um... <laughs> Uh, fuck turfs. It's you think I wouldn't have to say it, but you'd you think do. that, wouldn't you? <laughs> you'd think that you'd you would. Um, uh, but also, you know, be join up on Twitter. Be nice to people. Um, try new things. Uh, and really, above all, like the the best real advice I could give you besides like sort of the general stuff is really give your permission to start and fail something. You know, if you want to try something, do it. If you're afraid of looking like a fool, don't tell anybody. That's also like, you don't have to tell people that you're doing stuff. But if you want to try something, just give it a go. You literally never know where it's going to go. Not being afraid of looking like a fool when you try something new is one of those like magic abilities that anybody can learn, but it is... It can be life changing because you never know what will happen if you do something. If you just do a thing and then something good might happen. I'm currently, I am taking, uh, well, people have offered actually to uh, donate to the micro grant fund. So um, if you want to reach out to me at Titanomic RPG. Uh, on Twitter, or you can go titanrpg.com, uh, titanomachyrpg.com as well, and that'll have like all my links and stuff. But uh, if people would like to contribute to that fund, I can give more grants out because right now it's literally just me giving people money out of my own pocket. Uh, I can increase the number of those grants and the size of the grants, which I think would be really exciting. Uh, so definitely uh reach out if you want to make a pledge and uh other than that play couch core games go be generous with when you're buying indie games uh be open to new stuff and that's really all that's really all there is to it <laughs>